Group Corporate and Shared Services is one intricate department in the city of Joburg, and now under the leadership of MMC Leonot. We find out what it entails and her plans and priorities for that portfolio. And this is for the record. MMC Leonot, thank you so much for your time. It's always a pleasure. Just to start us off, can you simplify your portfolio? What in actual fact is Group Corporate and Shared Services? A really long name, first of all, which I think we need to simplify maybe to something like corporate services. 100%. Because not many people know, including my family, they were like, what, what, what is, is this? It? Yeah, what do you do? So really what Group Corporate and Shared Services focuses on is the internal mechanisms of the city. So your human resource department, mm -hmm. recruitment of your city manager, your Section 56 manager, so all your executive directors in the city, disciplinary processes, uh, but everything related to your recruitment, you know, payroll, etc. It also houses the fleet contracts, which provide for all of the city's entities and departments um, to an extent. Some of them do provide their own vehicles, but the majority of the fleet contracts sit there. Your copiers and princes that provide all of your revenue centers and, and offices. And then you go into the um, health and safety aspect, aspects because the department manages that. They also check buildings and determine whether or not they're safe and, you know, as per regulations, which you know is something we're having a problem with at the moment. Yes. And um, the health and safety of employees, the employees are actually our main stakeholder, if you will. And then by professionalizing that, you basically are then providing service delivery to your residents. And uh, so what you need to do is basically keep your employees happy, but you need to keep them honest in the same vein. So that's really the, the core of, of what corporate services does. They, they're the group function within the city of Johannesburg as a whole. Mm -hmm. MMC, let's speak about innovation and technology, the importance of having a central digital system. You know, how significant is it to have entities and departments talk to each other on one platform? It's, it's vital. It, it's something that should have been done a long time ago. I think we are running behind our residents, if, if you look at it that way. And it's something that we committed to under our, our mayor and Paul Palazzi, to centralizing the complaint logging mechanisms centralizing how people communicate with the city and how they receive information back. And that's something I'm working on with MMC Sudderby, who's the MMC of Finance, uh, because IT falls predominantly under her portfolio, but we want to obviously provide this function citywide. So what we're trying to do is amalgamate all of our apps, so we want to join them all in. Mm -hmm. We have 17 million apps. I'm probably over-exaggerating, but that's what it feels like. And we have several call centers, and we've got emails, and we've got Twitter accounts, and every entity and department, you must log it in a certain way. It's very difficult to remember. For me, it's difficult. I don't even want to understand, you know, or try and get to how difficult it is for a resident who's running their kids here and taking care of family members and getting to work, and to try and log a pothole is... Mission. Yeah. So you don't do it because it's... It just takes up too much of your time. And we're also spending a lot of money on things we don't need. So if we can consolidate this, we're not only saving money as a city, but we are providing our residents with a more efficient platform in order to communicate with them, which will enhance the relationship that we have with residents. Um, I know it's something I want. And I know it's something that residents have spoken to me, you know, for the last six years that they want. It's too difficult. Why? When we can do it better. Absolutely. Speaking on residents, how are you making sure that you improve customer satisfaction? Well, I think if your staff are happy, but also if you remove the elements, you know, that uh, people are very much, the city is useless and corrupt and, you know, you get it all the time. I'm sure you've heard Absolutely. it. Absolutely. We need to not only change that perception, but change the aspects that create that perception. Mm -hmm. um, so some of the things are empowering our, our human resource department so that they can function better. I mean, I had a meeting with them the other day and, and silly things like they need specific software in order to run processes quicker. They want, you know, an electronic leave management system because they've been trying to run leave for over, you know, 26 to 40,000 employees on a manual mm -hmm. system across 15 entities, which are run by different CEOs and across, a, you know, departments throughout the city that are not all centrally located. And you have about 60 people who are running this entire show, mm. trying to do payroll and, you know, I mean, they're drowning. That must limit productivity as well, MMC. Absolutely, but it's also demoralizing because at the end of the day, they then, you know, get sort of whacked over the head because they're not completing their functions. They're not performing their mandates. And it's not through their own fault. It's because the tools of trade are not sufficient enough to enable them. And they've said, you know, if we can do it this way, we would reduce the time we needed to do it you know, exponentially. And that way we could provide a better service. 
And I think we, we really need to, I don't know any organization that runs on a paper leave format for an organization that size. It's, it's crazy. Unheard of. Yeah. So I think, you know, it, it goes both ways. There are aspects that do need addressing. There is consequence management that is lacking in the city, and that's something we're also working on. We're reviewing all of our policies, um, which includes the work from home policy. We want to get the city back up to 100% capacity um, so that we don't have the scenario where you can't get service delivery because we don't actually have people at work. Mm -hmm. um, and you need to put in the, the protocols in place to ensure they're safe in the workplace in order to do that. Um, you need to give them the tools of trade, and it's not expensive. I've been looking at it with a team, and it's really not expensive to capacitate you know, those small aspects where you can to make them work better. Mm -hmm. You've highlighted a few problems or challenges, uh, but the one thing, MMC, that you think is massive enough that you, know, you want to change, and you, that mm. you've you know, essentially made your priority. Okay, so probably one of our biggest issues at the moment are our contracts. Mm -hmm. Contract management in the city is not it's not overseen the way it should be. So we have a situation at the moment where um, our contracts are expiring before we're even starting a process to, to commit to a new tender. So what does that mean? It means people come and take your resources away because you're not paying them. Um, so your fleet contracts, which includes your fire engines, your pick-it-up vehicles, your JRA vehicles, um, waste management, you know, all of those things. And the city previously has continuously reverted to what they call the Regulation 36. Now, for me, it's like a swear word. Mm -hmm. A Regulation 36 means you haven't done things in time, and now you have to do an emergency procurement. So if you remember back in 2015 already, mm -hmm. the city experienced this with the fire engine. Yes. And then in 2019, they tried to correct it. And the court said, you've created your own emergency. And that's why they kind of ruled against them. So it's really about contract management. And we've actually been speaking to IT about having an online contract management system so that we can, we can see, I want to be able to see it. I think trying to run a, this process manually through your supply chain is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, you can have a list of things, but we're so busy that you need to be able to have something that alerts you, you know, you, you, a year before the end of the contract, mm -hmm. you guys need to start advertising, you need to start putting in place these measures. It's not difficult. It just requires some sort of, you know, will to actually do this. Absolutely. MMC, just in conclusion, I for one know that you sit as councillor in the city of Johannesburg as council. I know that you are MMC of Group Corporate and that you belong to the Democratic Alliance, but what don't the residents of the city know about you? <laughs> um, yeah, look, I'm, I'm a mother. I, I came from the private sector. I joined the public sector because I was unhappy. I was unhappy with the processes. I managed projects for a developer. I, I couldn't understand why we were going backwards. And you know, at the time, somebody said to me, well, if you're gonna do something, go and do something. You know, don't be that person who sits in the couch, Complains. you know, armchair critic. So I thought, okay, fine. And, and I became a counselor, not knowing what that was. I didn't even know if I was gonna earn money. I mean, that's how funny it was. So um, I, I, I joined and somehow I got elected, which was a surprise because usually on your first try, it doesn't happen. Yes. And I'm terrible at interviews. So, you know, sometimes I wonder how I get hired because I tend to be that one that goes <laughs> when I have to talk about myself. So, it, it, yeah, it, it, was a, it was a game changer for me. And I realized being a ward counselor that you represented the people on the ground and you had to fight for them in council. But you also didn't have a predominant role in actually making the changes. You did as a group mm -hmm. in council, but I had to kind of set my aspirations a little bit higher so I could have a direct influence yes. on, on putting those changes in. And I'm, I'm very motivated. Um, I, I kind of will always strive to get to where I need to be in order to get what people want. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the things we're implementing now, what residents have been telling us over the last six years, why don't you do this? Why is this so difficult? And, and that's, what, that's the knowledge we take and we do. But besides that, you know, I, I, I love football. I play, my kids play, I coached. Um, nice. Yeah, so that's my, if, if I couldn't do this job and I was a male, I'd probably, <laughs> I'd probably play professionally if I could, but I, I doubt I'm, I'm at that level and I'm a bit old now. But that's, that's my passion. So yeah, don't phone me during the, the, the game. Um, and um, yeah, but, but otherwise I'm, I'm very committed. I mean, I, I think this takes a lot of time out of your life, out of your family life. But you can balance it if you, you're kind of smart about it. But a lot of things, I mean, yesterday morning I was getting ready for council and I had an urgent, you know, half past six, seven o'clock meeting. Mm. So I had to rush off to that quickly and then, you know, finish. For council. So it, it does take that toll. But I think for me, the residents motivate us because when you see people suffering 
and, and you yourself suffer because I'm a resident. My you know, dustbin also doesn't get collected when there's an issue. I also don't have power. I went five days the one week you know, without water, which I, I can't even tell you, give me no power for two weeks, but water. It's, it's terrible. And that stress of trying to get a hold of somebody to help you is just, for me, 